Now we come to the narrational entry point, uh, which from the perspective of the entry points to learning is all about looking at the element of story and narrative in the piece. So I'm going to ask my colleagues this first question here, which simply asks, what is the story that you see in this work of art? What do the colours, or how do the colours help to tell that story? So let's see if there are any of you look at this. So Declan, for example, what story for you comes out? Well, when I look at it, the first thing that I see are the beautiful patterns. Here in front of me, I see three completely different patterns. And I think of the huge amount of work that must have gone in to the design of these patterns and to then the incorporation of these patterns into the, the totality of this huge and uh, breathtaking uh, piece of fabric. So the precision with which each of these patterns have been carried out and executed tells me that somebody has put a huge amount of work. In fact, you know, it must have been done by a huge number of people, you know, this uh, amazing amount of work. So the intricateness, the, the, the diversity of the patterns and the hard work are the stories that come to my mind. So it's interesting already there because Declan, on the one, he moves from the notion of saying that perhaps it's one person who made it to several persons, people. So we'll see how, how that works out. And we are conscious maybe already that perhaps it's a story of people, a story of hard work. Anna, how did it strike you? Yeah, it, it struck me that it had to be a collaborative work. It was like it was far too much work for one person. But that it was a collaborative work that was done over a lengthy period of time as well. And because of the kind of replication of the colours and the patterns, that it was done with a lot of, of thinking and reflection and planning uh, within that group. So it must have undertaken that over months and months. So again, another element that comes out always in story is the notion of history, as it were, time. Over time, how did this story present itself? It couldn't have been made in an hour, as it were. Over time, what does it tell us? Dan, how did it strike you? I suppose for me, is I, I didn't hone in on the specifics the way that did. What I kind of honed in on is, is the movement, in terms of that movement is telling you a story. I mean, to me, it seems like a very a dynamic piece, even for, 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 for a piece that is still. You know, it's, there's a lot of movement in the way that the contours of, of the piece are kind of positioned. And for me, that was, I see it very metaphorically, or at least that's the way I normally see things anyway is I see it as, as a metaphor for life and change and movement. And even though some things may seem constant, that there is this movement here, and I'm wondering whether that's what the artist or artists uh, were trying to invoke in terms of something to do with um, their own lives or our life in general. So, so that's the story I see in it. Okay. And from my perspective, the story I see in it is influenced by things I've heard about it. As you were saying earlier, Kiran, yourself, you know, the story of the North Side, um, it is a, a community art project, as it were. So this story lives in two worlds, as it were. And uh, so one could also see uh, perhaps the, the lives of the people in it uh, that the story brings about. Perhaps there are many stories as people were knitting together and knitting their thoughts and discussing uh, what was happening. Um, so now uh, we, we will take another question from our narrative palette. Um, Veronica Box Mancilla has presented us and her colleagues with several questions that we could ask. And of course, in looking at any one work, we don't have to ask them all. It's just the notion of a stimulus to opening up the painting or the sculpture or the knitting, as in this case, whatever the artifact is, and opening up the experience. So um, let's say if we take, I think an interesting uh, question would be, uh, you know, where do you think this story comes from? In terms of, you know, another part of that question is, is the story that you see a true story? And I suppose I've already led you into that, that uh, in ways we happen to know that there is a true story. But of course, there could be many stories in this. So where do you think the story of the knitting mat comes from? Let's see. I suppose that the sheer length of it is, is quite breathtaking. Is it a 
timeline? Are, are they trying to tell us the story of life? Each person different, different colours, different races, different shapes, different sizes, different patterns. You know, uh, the length of it really is the one thing that strikes me. Uh, and if I had to make a guess, I would say perhaps they're trying to tell us that this is, is a timeline of events, maybe in a person's life or in the lives of the people who have made it. And I, does it represent the story of the city? Uh, you know, Cork's long history over, you know, maybe a thousand years or more longer. And that is the story of the diversity, the increasing multicultural nature of the city, with the representation here of all the different patterns and colours and um, you know, I just said that they're saying that there's a regularity and an irregularity in the pattern. And yet I think the colours are somewhat muted. So um, and that sort of was just a question that arose for me in terms of uh, it looks like, again, a celebration of the city and a celebration of the city's history. But not in what I would have thought of as the celebratory colours. Yeah, and interestingly, that was a very important point. I thought for a knitting map that took place at the city of Cork, you might imagine, since our Cork colours happen to be red and white, but we have no red and white in this. In so interestingly enough, it doesn't go into that stereotype. And if we see, as you were saying, Anna, all the people, the different voices, the multicultural context, and uh, you talked earlier, Kiran, yourself, of, of all the knitting hands together, you know. Um, so therefore, you know, in the light of our question, where do you think the story comes from? It comes from everybody's story, maybe, who's making it. What do you think then? Yeah, I was kind of like the same lines. I, I, I was kind of, I had gone again from the general to the specific as soon as, like, Declan was pointing out the various different patterns there. So, okay, it's likely that different people have different skills to, to develop certain patterns. So, therefore, we're talking about a whole multitude of individuals here, or potentially talking about a whole multitude of individuals. And what's interesting about this, these are individuals who probably wouldn't see themselves as artists, who are probably, you know, the ordinary people of Cork, as it were who wouldn't see themselves as doing anything exceptional when they are knitting. And knitting seems like such a, 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 a mundane pastime, as it were. And yet here it is, being displayed as a work of art. So in that sense, it's moving away from the idea of the hero artist, um, of the person that stands out from the crowd. These are ordinary people who together have created something extraordinary, uh, whether you like it or not. And, uh, and that's really not the point. The point is that it's extraordinary, as people have said about it. It's, it's, it's a scale and it's, you know, it's, it's construction. So for me, what it's doing is it's, it's allowing us to think about ordinary people and think about ordinary people in a space that is often kept from ordinary people, things like galleries. Well, we could, there are several other questions in the narrative palette that we could ask. But we're going to leave it at that. And just to, to remind you of some of the key messages you've heard there, perhaps this is the work of multiple artists. It brings multiple voices. Perhaps it's the whole history of a city. And as Dan pointed out, it's such an important point. When the individuals were making those little pieces, they were doing so as individuals on the one hand, but equally as community. So that word community is beginning to come up. And that what became just a little piece of work individually turns out then to be a work of art now displayed in a gallery so that very often we do things in one context and then they have a broader longer term implication and we think as well of art in the context of community and not just as it were within the gallery uh, so this we will leave the narrative there in order now perhaps to move on and think about the broader implications of the work for teaching and learning